The following is a fourth hand production. Are you a fan of movies? Or comics? Or video games? Or just anything else nerdy? Well, you should check out the Zing, Zing This, this podcast. podcast. And that's spelled Z E N G. This. And we have nerdy topics from comic book reviews to in depth analysis of iconic nerdy movies, as well as video game discussions. Mm hmm. Where's some of the best places to find us, Allie? Well, Podbean, of course. You can also find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Anywhere else you listen to your podcast. Podcasts. Yeah. So check us out. Once again, that is Zing, Zing this. this. Hello, all you bitches out there. This is James. Fuck, let me start that again. <laughs> Blooper. What? No! You suck! Oh my god! What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of What the Suck. My name is James. And I'm Chris. Welcome to episode 12, which is The Ginger Dead Man, which is a 2006 American horror comedy film directed by Charles Band and stars Gary Busey. Directed by Charles Band, produced by Charles Band. Uh oh, produced yep. and directed. One of those, those again, double threat. <laughs> produced by Charles Band, as I said, Joe Dane, Jethro Roth Kuschel. Written by William Butler and Dominic Muir, starring Gary Busey. That was right there. That was the reason for me picking this movie. Yep, sold. Yep. Robin Sidney, Ryan Locke, Alexia Alleman, Jonathan Chase, Margaret Bly, Daniela Melga. <laughs> There's no Mer- one Melgoza. 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 Newell Alexander, James Schneider, and Larry Cedar. Music is by Robert Bellinger, or is it Bellinger? No, it's Bellinger. Ba- Ballinger. 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 It's Ballinger. Cinematography by Keith J. Duggan. Ho! Let's see. Let's see how many people dog. get that. No, Hacksaw Duggan. Fool. Hacksaw Duggan, okay. What's wrong with you? Edited by Danny Draven. Distributed by Full Moon Entertainment. Oh, yeah. It's going to be stuff. a good one. Yeah. Yep. And Talos Entertainment. Release date of August 30th, 2006, with a merciful running time of 75 minutes. So good. So, so short. Awesome. And we're going to our tomato meter. I finally got it right after last week. Tomato meter, tomato meter. Tomato meter. meter. It has an actual, oh God, this might be too good. It has a 60% on the tomato meter, and the audience score is 28% on a, uh, let's see, 4,003 ratings. For the audience, but there's only five for the There's, a, there's only the five critic. for the critics, and, and three out of five liked it, so yeah, which we could be in trouble. Does not account for taste, uh, and those critics came from places such as Cinema Crazed, East Bladder, 7mm Pictures, SBS.is, and DVDTalk.com. Not really some of your higher quality <laughs> critics. Hey, man, you know. Fuck them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, what is the movie all about, James? That's right. The synopsis reads as such. In a quiet small town diner, a deranged patron, that's shit, there's lots of those, yeah. Millard Findelmeyer, played by Gary Busey, opens fire on the Lay family, killing all but the daughter, Sarah Lay, played by Robin Sidney. During the trial, Sarah's testimony sends Millard to the electric chair and his ashes are sent to his mother. In a vow of revenge, Millard's mother mixes her son's ashes <laughs> That's hard to say. with a secret gingerbread cookie mix, which makes it way oh, which makes its way into Sarah Lee's bakery. Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee. Nobody does it like Sarah I just, Lee. I just fucking caught that. I mean, it's spelled different, but I was like, oh my god. When one of the bakery employees, Brick Fields, I said Mrs. Fields, <laughs> Brick, Jonathan, played by Jonathan Chase. Cuts his arm and accidentally bleeds into the mixture. An old curse spawns a a deadly 12-inch walking, talking, killing gingerbread cookie 
and wreaks havoc on anything standing in his way. Evil has never tasted so delicious. Oh, God. And uh, so, okay, so how are we going to rate this piece of shit? Well, our rating system is always a, uh, we rate it on turd emojis, uh, one to five, one being great, five being a complete pile of shit. If you'd like to hear the descriptions of said uh, turd ratings, please refer to previous episodes because we ain't doing that shit That's no right. More. You've got like... 27 episodes with our rating system. Go listen to one of those. That's right. And if you, if you don't want to, then too Just bad. know this. Yeah. One, it's great. Five, you want to go kill yourself. Yeah. Okay. All right. With that being said, let's uh, get into the review, shall we? I'm actually looking forward to this one. Let's Me do too. it. I love Gary Busey. Hell yeah. In a quiet bakery, one woman is about to confront her past. We gotta fight back. An unforgivable act of violence. It also says here that after they fried him in the chair, they cremated him and sent his ashes to his mother in Coonsboro. Something else was just left at the back porch too. Hmm. Must be that gingerbread seasoning. Ah, <laughs> oh, heck. An unholy curse. <laughs> what is that fucker anyway? I think I know what. I mean, who it is. It's me, Raptor! Why'd you come and get me? A new kind of cookie. What the hell is that? But it sure ain't the Pillsbury fucking dope boy. Who are you? Ah! As fast as you can, something's in the oven, the ginger dead man. <laughs> Evil never tasted so good. Eat me, you punk bitch! Motherfucker. Man, we, we, <laughs> we were not prepared for this fucking film, dude. Holy shit. I'll tell you what, Busey never disappoints. Um, <laughs> Except this time. Well, kind of. Um, well, the movie doesn't waste any fucking time. It goes right to the beginning, and Busey's robbing this place, and there's a family cowering in the booth, and they get up and actually, for some reason, decide to challenge him. You know, Busey's crazy already, and he got a gun. Yeah. Uh, so he, the dad charges him with a steak knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, real it, stupid, real, real smart. Yeah, real stupid. Gets gunned down in cold blood. Bam, dead. And then the fucking boy, the son, gets up and t- keeps telling him, "Just put down the gun. Just put down the gun. Just put it down." Just keeps whispering it. So he does. He puts it down. And he says, "Now what you gonna do?" In my, I don't even know how to imitate Busey the best. Well, you know what? It's guns on the ground now. He says, "Now what you gonna do? You gonna do something?" So the kid stupidly dies for the gun uh Busey's got a knife Findelmeyer yeah Findelmeyer Findelmeyer grabs him throws him against the counter bends uh-huh. him over the counter and stabs the shit out of him yeah with the steak knife that his dad charged him with yeah so two down two dead he robs the fucking store actually uh three down because he killed the mom with a shot to the head before he killed the dad Oh, that's right. He did. Yeah, All but right. it, it's like within the first two seconds of the film, so you fucking blink and you miss it. You get the majority of your kills in the first 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, so then then that's left, just, just leaves a daughter, and um, he doesn't kill her. But let me tell you something. This three and a half minute, this is three and a half minute intro yep. yeah, before the credits. This is the only time you see Gary Busey 
in this whole fucking movie. That is true. He he makes no other appearance. Voice he's, he does voice work. He does voice but he, work. But this is the easiest movie he's ever done in his fucking life because yep. he had to be on set for two hours to film this three and a half minute sequence. After that, he did the rest of his work in an audio booth, probably yep. drunk off his ass. <laughs> so you get. <clears throat> You get only three and a half minutes with with Gary Busey, and it is the it is not fun. It is not cool. It is not hilarious. He's actually cold blooded. In this. He's just being. Yep. He's the most fucking rational he's ever been in his fucking career. Like, you gonna try something? He's saying he's talking all smooth and shit. And I will make note that the music is over the top ridiculous. Oh yeah, it's they're the corniest shit you've ever heard. Suspenseful music goes on fucking forever. But it is befitting such a culinary tale of murder and mayhem. So I was like, this is, I mean, it's just fucking stupid. I mean, I'll, if you can picture the corniest bullshit music. <laughs> that was it. This was it. Yeah. Funny. So we flash forward, you know, to the bakery. Gal's in there we doing her thing. Let, let, let's just make note that we flash forward. We don't know we flash forward. No. Nope. We have no idea because, well, okay, we have some idea because the daughter is there. She's in the bakery making yes. things. But we have no idea how long it's been. We have no idea what what if it's the same city that she was in before we have we are given no information we just all of a sudden put into this fucking bakery watching this bitch make and we already aired because he did not shoot mama yeah he did because mama's still alive oh he shot somebody he shot three people he shot three he shot two people and then stabbed the third it must have been two yeah i think it was two of her brothers and her daddy okay okay that makes more sense we almost honestly it doesn't fucking matter (laughs) it really doesn't fucking matter yeah, because after that, then it's, it becomes a little mind numbing. So then we're introduced to our our, our stars, the uh, the girl who I don't remember her fucking name. What's her name? Oh shit, uh, Lori or Laura, Laura, Lauren, some shit. I don't know. Uh, and then we're introduced to her coworker, Brick. Brick the wrestler dude. The baker, but the, the butcher baker. The butcher baker dude. Prepare to meet your maker. Yep. And. They're they're t- they she gets a package in. It's supposed to be gingerbread spices, quote unquote gingerbread seasoning. And then yeah. what happens is they go to open the can, and in the process of opening the can, he cuts the living somehow shit out of his fucking hand. Yeah, and instead of taking it over to the sink, right, he drapes his fucking hand over an open container of, of bake of of baking material, gingerbread like flour, gingerbread mix, or yeah, whatever, yeah, and bleeds a shitload in it all into the seasoning that they don't even see. They don't, that, see. And, and and then <laughs> and then after he he takes off because he's going to some wrestlepalooza bullshit. She proceeds to make the gingerbread. Um, um, whatever, but she uses the same mix that his blood is in. Uh, you know, I'm just wondering where in the fuck Marvin Zindler was to check this out. This is not healthy. No. It's bullshit. If you don't know who Marvin is, Google him. I mean, this this right here is it should be shut down by the board because this is unhealthy. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So then, but in between all that, we're, we're introduced to another character, some friend of hers who, I don't know, I just call her Latina Lady Number 2 because I don't know her name. <laughs> And she's re- names, like you said, names are not important. not important at all. And she she's reading a paper, and, and this is this is the quote unquote exposition dump that we're given because yes, she's reading the paper and she's reading a story about how Findle Findle what Findlemeyer 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 was executed the night before. Yep, and then he was cremated, and his ashes were sent to his mama in Coon Swallow. Yep, so they don't have to they don't have to fucking explain it. They don't have to film it. He doesn't have to do any any scenes. Yep. It, it it's it's it. That's all you see. That's He's right. done. Yeah. Not not how he cat how he was captured, you know, was there was there was there a battle? None of that shit. He's just all of a sudden he being he was executed and he was and his ashes were sent to his mama. But they don't even explain how his ashes weren't actually sent to his mama. Somehow they got sent to the fucking bakery. Well, mama delivered them. The hooded figure was his mother. Oh, I see. Okay. The hooded figure. I, I missed the, that part. Yeah, the, the, the foul and evil person in the hooded uh, garment dropped his ashes off at the back of the diner. Yeah. And that's what she ended up making cookies gotcha. out of later. So the, uh, but then we're also introduced to the other mama. And induced to drunk-ass mama. Crazy mama. I, I like this lady and I like this character because only in Texas yeah. you have a drunk-ass woman with a full bottle of Jack Daniels and a 12-gauge. Out in front of her store, pacing around, mumbling, getting pissed off at the business across the street. 
and she makes three precision 12-gauge shotgun blast and knocks down this banner across, across the street. Across the street. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's not shooting slugs. No. And there's <laughs> no there's no kickback on it. She's just firing none, like it's a BB gun. None whatsoever. Should have took off her damn shoulder. And like I said, only in Texas. Yeah, because not the cops don't come. Nobody calls them. No, nothing happens. She just walks. They, they, her daughter and her friend grab the gun, and her friend takes her back inside, and that's all that happens to her. No, no charges pressed for vandalism at all. And then we get back to a long, drawn out, unfortunate "woe is me" scene. After we're, of course, introduced to uh, to the protagonist. Well, no, the, one of the protagonists. I just the call family. him Hop Along Dumb Shit. Hop Along Dumb Shit, the man who runs a restaurant or the bakery across the street. Says, what the hell y'all doing here? Pulls up in a Camaro and a Texas hat, and he's got a fake-ass accent. <laughs> and he's got a hoe of a daughter in his car with him. Miss Pretty Face, whatever her Miss Waco is. Pretty Face. Yeah. And that's literally the... That's literally. Yeah. And we're, we're introduced to the fact that his store is opening up in a year. Once it opens up, her bakery was going to go under, and he wants to just buy her, her bakery from her so he can tear it down. And then she's like, don't worry. And then the daughter's telling him, don't worry, I'll pay for the banner and blah, blah, blah. And basically takes the rap yeah. for mama. Because she's standing there holding the shotgun. <laughs> His store's all shot the fuck up. She's like, I'll pay for the banner. She's like, damn right you will. And so then uh, we go back inside and that's when this Butcher is, Baker's leaving. And that's when we get the woe is me scene that yeah. I always call it. You know, where they talk for like 10, 15 minutes. Whole lot of shit and nothing's happening. She's pushing around racks of fucking croissants and shit. And, and then, then decides it's time to get to the gingerbread dough, which has, uh, as I noticed, probably been mixing for about a day and a half. Yeah. Because they, I think they started mixing it at the beginning of the movie and it's been mixing ever since. Yeah. <laughs> just fucking going the whole time. And then she, she, then she makes the fucking gingerbread man. She makes a 12 inch gingerbread man because I don't know who the fuck asked for one. But somebody did, apparently. So she makes a gingerbread man, sticks it in this giant walk-in oven. This this is literally the, one of the stupidest fucking things I've ever seen. I mean, this fucking thing, it looks like a walk-in freezer, but it's a fucking oven. It's got And you're dials. baking cookies in there. And they, they, uh, throughout like, the movie, people are walking in and out of this motherfucker. I mean, you're opening the door and you're walking into what has to be 400-degree heat. Yeah. And yeah. just walking in there, grabbing just a pan do, 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 and walking do, do, do. out. Falling on the ground. There's no heat on the ground, apparently. Apparently, the ground is heat proof. Yeah. There's no heat there. Uh, so she makes the gingerbread man. And this is where the movie takes a big dump. Dump. Because the hoe walks in. What's her name? Miss Pretty Waco Miss Face Pretty Waco walks Face, in. Yeah. Starts giving her shit. Sticks a rat in her store because she didn't think she was there. So right. so she was going to try to get her run out of business with the, the health, health department. department. Yeah. And they get into the dumbest fucking fight. Meanwhile, you're, you're treated to wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful scenes of the gingerbread man being baked into life. And Did you see he, the face forming and all yeah, this Yeah, he looks like this is the dumbest fucking design I've ever seen in, in, in a puppet ever. So Waco Pretty Face takes a pie... You know, she takes a pie to the puss, and then all of a sudden they start running around throwing fucking croissants at each other and shit. And finally, somebody lands a punch. Yep. You know, uh, I don't even know what her fucking name is. I don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It don't matter. It don't fucking matter. And then the boyfriend comes in, who was in the car waiting the whole time, and a bunch of the nonsense scenes that just this script is so bad. It is so bad. It is bad. It is bad. But then, then all of a sudden, we're treated to the birth of the gingerbread man. The ginger dead man. Ginger dead man. And he appears in the window of the walk-in oven and scares with, the shit out of... With a busey laugh. Now, let's also not forget, we hear him in there scarfing. He's eating. He's burping. And he's not drinking in the oven, he's milk. not. Not in the oven, he's not. No, that's, he's in the cooler or something. That That's after after they let him out, yeah. After but the they first. inadvertently let him out. Yeah. I mean, they had no idea, but he got out. But he's in there eating, and you look around. But when you see shit flying out of this room, yeah, he's supposed to be throwing stuff out of the thing. Yeah, a full size human arm throwing shit, chucking so it shit was, out. It of was the room. a bad cut. It was yeah. a real bad cut. Yeah, they they did not really. Uh, that that was the best <laughs> cut they had to go with. That was the best cut. Let's say that, and and it wasn't even that great. So then they're running around trying to escape the ginger. Oh my God, the the twelve inch. 12 inch cookie cookie 
gingerbread man <laughs> that you could just kick and bust into a thousand pieces. You could throw a, a, a pot of water on to make him soggy. Something. And they're running around. They're running from him as if he's some. Uh, and at this point, we also realize that this whole entire movie is taking place inside this fucking bakery. But what's also sad is these fuckers are just sitting there discussing whether or not they should leave. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a killer cookie running there's around. There's one killer cookie. There's about four <laughs> exits in this fucking building. <laughs> and they stay. Four exits. And then, and, and so then, so then, then drunk grandma comes in. <laughs> and she's... She's she's drinking and she's she's she hears the Gary Busey laugh and she she recognizes it, and all of a sudden, what is funny though? She takes that bottle. She is, she sees him standing on the counter, and she takes that bottle of booze she's been nursing the entire movie so far. And she goes and she goes not well, anymore, not anymore. Done with that. No more of that. But he he jumps up on a counter and she's she's sitting there staring at him for like a good thirty seconds, and then because he's half drunk. She walks towards him. And she keeps covering her eyes, and then she peeks, covers her eyes, because she's trying to make sure she's not seeing things. Right. And she and, holds her fucking hand out. And like, she's going to do the Pillsbury Doughboy poke in the belly with her finger. <laughs> That's what she's trying to go do. <laughs> and, of course, this fucking dude has, uh, the bread man, the ginger dead man, has a, a knife behind his back, because why not? And so then, of course, we get a stupid cutaway scene where you, all of a sudden you see the knife flash and then a finger fly and he chopped the finger off. Yep. She starts screaming, backpedals and falls into what looks like a, uh, a laundry, a, a laundry, laundry bin of some sort, yeah. like linens and stuff, you know, yeah. towels and stuff. And then she goes, what the hell are you? And he delivers probably the best line of the whole movie. Well, it ain't, I ain't the fucking Pillsbury Doughboy. Yeah. And then uh, the other Latina girl number two comes in um, and she's talking and she's trying to help her out of the basket. And then she gets a head full of pan, <laughs> courtesy of the ginger dead man. Kablap. Yeah. And, you know, you're, you're seeing at this point, you, you've already pretty much seen the puppet in its full glory. And it is absolutely horrible. It is, it's very it is badly bad. Done. Like very we we done. we were discussing, we don't know what the budget for this was, but we were guessing probably around five hundred thousand dollars, and of that, four hundred thousand went to getting Gary Busey there for a day, and then fifty thousand went into the location, uh, forty thousand went into getting all the food, <laughs> ten thousand went to the puppet. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, then boyfriend goes outside to get a gun because they're in danger. And then they go inside, and there's a stupid scene talking to the main girl, whatever her name is. And it just drags. It drags. Talking it's about, another one of these fucking things. Like they're trying We're, to establish characters, what it is, but it's what the, so they're, it's What they're so doing bad. is they're trying to bulk it up. See, they've already paid Busey. He's off the set. He's probably already recorded all of his lines. So they're doing everything they can to stretch this movie into yeah. the painful hundred and. Ten How many minutes minute was it? Uh, seventy-five minutes. Seventy-five minutes. One hour, ten minutes. One so, hour. yeah. So, so then the dad shows up because earlier the the blonde uh, the the daughter had called him to come help her, and yep. the dad shows up. He gets out of his car. He goes up to her car. And I'm gonna, before you continue. I'm going to say at this point before uh, it goes on that I predicted something stupid. Yeah, I did. said you're going to sit there. Leave the car door open with the lights on, the engine running, and you're going to wander around. Something's bound to fucking happen. Somebody's yeah. going to steal that damn thing. Yeah, but some... Okay, somebody. Like like a, a car thief or a something. A carjack. I was just saying it being sarcastic. I said, somebody's going to steal this shit. Never would you expect the gingerbread man to get in the fucking car. <laughs> use a metal rolling pin as an extension to push the gas somehow is able to rev the car up and... And steer it. And steer it. And he steers it directly into dad into a wall. What? The second annual Bayou City Paranormal Symposium is here. April 25th and 26th at the Pasadena Convention Center. Special guests include John Zaffis, Katie Stafford, the Kling Brothers, and more. Two spine-tingling interactive exhibits, including the fan favorite Psychomantium 2. Over 40 vendors and exhibitors will be on hand. Free vendors shopping all weekend. Discounted pre-sale tickets and VIP available now through February 29th. Bayou City's premier event for the things that go bump in the night. Go to badwolfevents.com for tickets and more info no he gives him the old christine style kill i love it so that that is 49 minutes five seconds into the movie you get your first literally your first kill. legit kill 
I mean, you have three kills at the beginning, but that don't count because that's not Ginger Dead. That's just Gary Busey. No, that's Gary Busey. As a matter of fact, that was, probably, that was probably surveillance footage of Gary Busey in a restaurant somewhere who actually killed fucking people. <laughs> and they just put it into the movie. Uh, you never know. And so 49 minutes and you finally get a kill. It's a dad in, in the, the car. Okay, so then there's that. Then we're treated to... Uh, hang on. Let's see. More. Oh, so then... The, the guy and the girl find the second Latina in the oven. Actually, she's no, in the freezer. She's in the freezer. In the freezer. Yep. And she's frosted. She's frosted and sprinkled. <laughs> sprinkled. And cherries are put on her tits as nipples. Yes. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You heard that right. Yes. Cherries are put on her tits as nipples. So they drag her ass out, and all they do is cover her with a blanket, but they leave her on the fucking floor. I'm still trying to figure out how the fuck he had time to... to convulsing. To, to frost her entire fucking body. Ah, uh, Well, during he, all this boring bullshit dialogue, He probably. didn't want to go around and kill these people. Instead, he frosts that bitch. Yep. So then, then uh, we get another scene where where um, Miss Pretty Face... Waco is, Pretty Face. ...is walking around, and she... All of a sudden comes across, I keep wanting to call him Frosty because he reminds me a lot of, of Jack Frost, but it's not Frosty. Um, she runs into uh, Gingerbread Man and who slices her face. Like three times, but yet the blood effect on that one is pretty poor. Three times, but it only looks like one wound. One wound, and it's just a little bitty splatter. Yeah. So it's pretty poorly done. So then she runs into the other two in the kitchen area, in the back kitchen, and then they discover Grandma's in the oven somehow and <laughs> been in there I don't know how fucking long, but she looked like she got all fucked up. But she's still alive somehow. Still alive. Still alive. Not even smoking. And she's in... Uh, I'm sorry. This is the dumbest fucking movie prop I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. Because there are different... You know, as we get into this a little more toward the end... You'll know what we're talking about, but yet this person is in there, still alive. The oven, God knows how hot it is. If yeah. it's hot enough to bake, it would kill somebody in seconds yes. or even maybe a minute at yeah. most. You know, scald the lungs, death, all this shit. Well, anyway, they pull her out. Yeah. And after they get her out of the thing, they just leave her on the fucking floor again. Yeah. And then Miss... Uh, so just before that, just before that happens, though, Miss Pretty Face gets killed. Yep, finally. Now, this is the second and the only other kill in this entire fucking movie. Yeah. No, take it back. There's one more at the end, but it's stupid. But um, <laughs> So she says she's leaving. She's walking towards the exit. She pulls a rope, which knocks some stuff on the ground behind her. Then all of a sudden, off screen, you hear him laugh. You hear a knife go through the air, and then it lands directly in her forehead. You're right. You hear... <laughs> You yep. hear the knife make You don't noise. see anything. You don't see him throw it. You don't see his... And we're talking Rambo knife. This thing's yeah. got a huge handle, and he manages to throw it hard enough to bury it all the way yeah. up to the to, fucking handle. To the handle. handle in her skull. Yeah. So at that point, okay, so then they, they uh, after they pull Grandma out, they decide that they're going to trick him and get him into the oven. And so, uh, but what happens is he actually, what? I'm, no, go ahead. I'm, I, oh, I, th I thought you were going to... I was just getting... I was just sitting there making a face because I'm sitting there going, he's about to take the pistol away yeah, yeah, from yeah. Pretty Boy. So so they... He, some happens and he ends up trapping the main girl in the, in the walk-in oven. He knocks down Pretty Boy and then there, there's... there's <laughs> Okay, so this is... I, this is so fucking dumb. So... <laughs> <laughs> he he traps her in the oven in the oven, but before he closes the door, apparently there are controls inside the oven, which make no sense. Stupid. He 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 presses plastic all the, controls. He presses all the controls, the Death Star controls. Yeah. And then he closes the door. Okay. Then he puts a pan on the doorknob to lock it in somehow, and knocks Pretty Boy down. Pretty Boy comes to shoots the pan off of the door with crystal I mean, point precision, with, with pre like quick draw shit. Just yeah. Pop, pop. So she's able to get out, and then... Now, mind you, he shot twice. He shot twice. Okay. okay. He has a six-shooter, by the way. A six-shooter. He has a six-shooter. It looks like a forty-four. Yeah. Or a thirty or a three fifty seven. It's a yeah. big-ass big ass six-shooter. Well, that son of a bitch. So, the... <laughs> so, then, so then, before we get too far ahead, so then she gets out, she crawls over to him, and then Gingerbread Man appears. Then, at the same time, Butcher Baker Boy, Butcher Baker Bitch Boy, comes back. <laughs> From his his wrestle wrestle palooza, 
he shows up wearing fucking goggles in a dumbass outfit. Dun, and dun, dun. He decides, I'll he's, throw that in. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna wrestle the fucking gingerbread man. At that point, at your that point, ass is toast. At that point, the gingerbread man pulls out the gun. He that says, "Pretty boy got, had." Yeah, he goes, "You got to be shitting me!" And his best Busey pulls out the gun and goes to work. I mean, he starts blasting all over the place. He, he ain't hitting shit. He's not hitting shit. He's not even really holding it. It's like tucked under his arm. You can see the puppeteer's finger pressing the trigger in the shot. And that's not even the stupidest part. No, what's the dumbest part, James? The dumbest part, my friend, is besides the two shots that dumb fuck on the floor, I think his name was Amos. I yeah, Amos. Coming yeah, back, Amos. Amos yeah. Shot the pan off of there. He fired two rounds. Yeah. Gingerbread man gets a hold of the gun and fires, I shit you not, folks, 18 shots. 18 additional rounds from a six-shooter. From a six-shooter with no reloading. With no reloading, just straight on. Straight up. I mean, this is Old West style. And that, that is fucking dumb. And after he finally empties his Hollywood-style six-shooter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that's Hollywood for That's what you. it is, yeah. Uh, Obviously, it's exaggerated. It's it's corny as fuck. You know the whole premise anyway is stupid. But the, after uh, he empties it, Baker, Butcher Baker. No, the uh, the the Latino number two knocks him off the the counter with the. That's pan. right. She gives him a swipe and says, "Here, take that bitch," and yeah. smacks the fuck out of him. And that's when Butcher Baker, bitch boy, jumps on uh, his jumps ass. on him and holds him down and says. I'm going to kill each you or some shit, and then proceeds to eat his head. Eats his fucking head. Eats the head and the arm. And okay. then there's a bunch of red goo on the ground. Yeah. And so at that point, they think everything's fine. Everything he, he's defeated. But he's yet, defeated. this is not a cookie. It's not a cookie. It's not a fucking cookie. It's like, it's almost like he turned into meat, because when he's eating his head, he looks, it's like stretching and snapping like, like taffy and shit. It's like a pot pie or something. Yeah, it's fucking yeah. nasty as shit. So then everybody is 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 getting out of the of the of the bakery except for book uh butcher baker bitch boy and <laughs> Latina girl number 2. He stays behind to wipe it to clean his face off. Well, lo and behold, turns out that somehow because Gary Busey's gingerbread man is is possessed, he possesses butcher uh baker bitch boy. Quadruple what <laughs> butcher baker bitch boy. Quadruple B, yeah. It. Yeah, so he ends up being possessed. Uh, the main girl goes back in to check on him, which I uh, predicted. You predicted by the as way. well, yeah. And then we're presented with butcher picture, uh, butcher baker bitch boy, with some with some makeup <laughs> to make him look possessed. I love it. Try, trying to say that shit three times <laughs> yeah. fast. Butcher, butcher baker, baker bitch, bitch, boy, bitch boy, butcher, butcher baker, baker bitch boy, butcher baker bitch boy. Baker baker bitch boy. <laughs> yeah, that's, fuck all that. And so anyway, so then they get him into the oven and. Because the oven's so inconsistent, the walk-in oven is so inconsistent. Within ten seconds, he's he's burnt. So they just killed off her coworker, her friend. Yep, butcher baker, uh, butcher baker, bitch boy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, and, and give it no no second thought, no second thought, none, none. Then she goes back in. Like I said, they all get out. Yeah. And she goes back in, and you made note of this. They get back in there, and all the chaos and mayhem that ensued well, for the past hour is not no longer. The place is spotless. It's clean. It is so clean. There's not a drop of speck of shit on the floor. I mean, There's nothing. That, that that's just a continuity error, but it's still it's it's so obvious. Yes, it is. Um. So anyway, so then the next scene is like it's weeks later, and the bakery's doing great, and there's like a big sale during the day, and people are coming up and buying all kinds of dumb shit. And two boys come up and say, "Do you have any gingerbread cookies?" And they're and like, two nurses are like, yeah, some girl, just some old lady came by, the the mom from earlier probably, yep. came by and dropped these off. And they open a box and these four little normal sized gingerbread men <laughs> look nothing like the other one. But you're like, oh shit. But then. Their eyes all move. And that's like, the end of the movie. And that's a whole army of these little fuckers. So you're yeah. like, god dang. Now, one little point I did miss, unfortunately. Go ahead. Which was one of the funniest parts of the movie to me. Is some cold blooded shit was when you know Hop Along Dumb Shit was killed, yeah, and damn near cut in half by his own car, yeah. His daughter comes out there, oh, oh daddy, daddy, yeah. no, daddy. And I'm sorry, I missed this <laughs> you part, you can't leave me, but it's like it's so mind numbing, and you know, trying to explain this fucking movie is just it's, it's hard enough as it is, but anyway, you can't leave me, daddy. Oh, well, you did. You ain't going to be needing this big gold <laughs> ring. And she takes a she fucking takes ring his out of his hand. And, and just goes. And that's it. And just leaves. Yeah. So, end of movie. 
That's disappointed. It. I was really looking forward to this, but it, it, it unfortunately much... disappointed me. Even for a shitty horror movie, it disappointed me, unfortunately. Yeah. The Busey part at first was the best part. Okay. I'm sorry to say. Uh, it which... was. Now, his voiceovers, he had some good lines. Okay. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm just going to roll with it. Go for it. Acting. Okay. It was complete shit. Oh, yeah. It was, it of was course non-existent. It was. This was horrible. Even from Busey, he wasn't even phoning in. He was, like, faxing it in. He was like, holy shit. Yeah. You know. But he, he played a pretty good cold-blooded whatever. You know, he just... Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of the acting was pathetic. The effects were horrible. You know, blood yeah. effect, that they this the practical effects the in this movie was, was absolutely sucked. Shit. The puppet was dumb. Uh, yeah. The script... Lame. Oh the my God. A, the uh, story itself, the premise, would have been like I said. This this is like one of those other ones. This could have been much better done. I mean, a, a killer cookie could have. They could have done a lot more with this. Yeah, where it had been at least funnier and a little right. more and a little more death. But they they blew it. They, yeah, they this is a swing and a miss. Yeah. Um, just because Busey's in it, uh huh. Even his voice. I'm going four turds on this. Four one. turds. All I, right. I can't give it a five turd because I love me some Busey. All right. But there wasn't enough of him to make up for everything else that was so horrible. Gotcha. Uh, so that's what I'm going that's with. Going what about for. you, brother? Man, everything about this movie is just bad and just <laughs> wrong. I mean, the uh, the script was horrible. The acting was terrible. The story was was terrible. We we've seen it done better. In movies like Jack Frost. See, I know y'all hear me laugh a lot when he's talking, but it's only because I'm watching his facial expressions. <laughs> this is seriously painful for him. I mean, Jack Frost was was basically the same movie. It was just done so much better. I mean, and not better as in it was a better movie. Just it had better lines. Uh, it had a better premise, a better costume. Uh, the the one liners from Jack Frost were so much better. Oh, that, yeah. That's the thing. They gave Gary Busey a role as a gingerbread man and they didn't do one fucking pu- cookie pun one no. gingerbread pun they, they just did him- well, all they did was i ain't or he, when she goes you know when she, yeah but that's not he's... a pun that's that's just like a, that's a one line that, that that's not that funny but like they didn't do like anything like that uh gary Busey was in it for three minutes on screen <laughs> and again i think that was just surveillance footage of him actually holding up a, a restaurant <laughs> this uh, was this was post accident Busey, yeah. by the way and 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 then the rest of the time he's he literally faxing it in on his lines with the with the shitty puppets uh that they used uh the the continuity was terrible the 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 cinematography was terrible everything was terrible i didn't find one redeeming factor about it even with Busey. like i like Busey from like like uh uh what do you call it dc cab yep. and and black sheep and uh how predator 2 gary Busey yep. was better than gary Busey here <laughs> All right, uh, and I just—it was painful. It was seventy-five minutes, uh, the worst seventy-five minutes of my life thus far. Oh my lord! I now come on now. I cannot recommend this movie for anybody. I am going to have to pull out the six. I'm going six on this. Damn! I cannot recommend this at all. It's Over not, the top. It's not fun. It's not funny. It's not even worth watching. Just avoid. And I don't under, I don't understand. <clears throat> How they made three more movies with this fucking premise? Because <laughs> we saw there's there's two more sequels, and then there's a crossover with Evil Bong. I don't want to watch Evil Bong the movie. No, I don't want to see the sequels or the crossover with Gingerbread Man because I don't understand from what it was so mind mind numbingly just horrible. Well, that's what the that's the point of this whole thing. It is. Brother. So I'm going six. Don't Damn. watch it. I'm I'm okay. If 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 you're listening and you're you're a, a, a constant listener or you're a u- usual listener and you feel yourself usually go more towards James recommendations and his is a four, you can watch it. Um, but be prepared to drink heavily, extremely uh, heavily, and have some friends with you to make fun of it. But if you feel yourself usually going more towards my recommendations, it's a six. Don't go fucking near it. At all. Yeah. At all. Well. Yeah. <laughs> that, all right. Well, now that that's out of my memory, James, uh, can you remember where they can find us? Let me think. Hmm. Yeah, I think I can dig it up. At the bakery? Oh, <laughs> at the bakery. 
We are very proud members of the fourthhand.com network. You can go there and find our shows. You can also find several other very good projects. Uh, a lot of good people there, a lot of good shows. Check them out. Including our other podcast, that State of Fear true. podcast. State of Fear podcast. Go check that out. Yep, both on the same page. We also have a um, Facebook page. For what to suck, you just look at someone. What to suck? I mean, there's not there's not another one out there. So nope. Nope. we'll come right up. We are also on Instagram That's under right. what to suck, but uh, you have to put the underscores between the, the words to find us. Yep. We're also on Castbox. Yep. Of course, uh, Google, Apple, all that shit. Um, Spotify. You know, Spotify. Like I said, just go out anywhere. there and look for us. We're pretty much all over the place now. Yeah. So go rate, go review, go give us a thumbs up, a thumbs down, one star, five stars. Tell us what you like, what you didn't like. Just uh, go out there and, and, and spread the love, man. Please. Yeah. And until next time, I'm Chris, and I forgot my line. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll see you at the next Suckfest. That's right. Six turds will do that to you. Yeah, I will. And I'm James, and if it ain't on what to suck, it ain't shit. Peace, bitches. Deuces. You've been listening to a fourth-hand joint.